I've been to prison on seven different occasions. On seven different occasions? Yeah, with a maximum sentence of two years for one. My name is Kweku Gardner. I'm a fancy by tribe. I'm a Ghanaian. I live around Tesano. I'm a product of Prince of Wales College, presently Achimota Secondary School. From there, I went to tech. I did architectural draftsmanship. But due to peer pressure, half parenting, and other exponential factors, I fell victim to the use of drugs, i.e. heroin, cocaine, cannabis, and anything that alters the state of mind. I don't know whether you remember our interview with um, one gentleman, um, Kweku Gardner, call him evil. Uh, those of you watching us at in someone prison, uh, Ankafo, he's been everywhere, everywhere. Uh, I call him the most wanted. Uh, Kweku Gardner, evil. Um, that interview really went viral. A lot of people were asking a lot of questions. And today, I have Gardner with me. Evo, uh, Ghana, how are you? I'm fine. How is life treating you? So good. So good. <laughs> are you evil? Uh, I'm not that evil, but per my past life, I had to assign to the name evil because of certain things that I was doing per the people that publicly I show up with. Especially my senior sister was married to a pastor in our school days. Normally they visit me in school with the church van. So people were doubting my character per this background. Oh no, this guy is devilish. This guy is Lucifer. This guy is evil. That is how come the name came to stay. But personally, I'm not evil. Okay, um, I've listened to a lot of um, uh, addicts and they keep saying they were conning. Gardner, were you conning? No, I wasn't conning specifically, but conning happens to be part of every crime we do. I, my field was communist inferior tactics, field works. Yeah, I use my mind for everything. It's not con. Con is telling stories to win you, your heart, you support me. No, I strategize by way of, you know, common sense, legal aspects. You make a commitment to whatever I propose to you. Let me ask you, um, in our previous interview, you didn't mention, but let me ask you, were you robbing? I didn't go to that extent, but robbing is just taking somebody's property at the point of people perceive the gun. But not the gun. There can be verbal robbing. Yes. Per the way I convince you to make a commitment is another way of robbing. Any instrument I will display by way of visual conception to you is meant to convince you to give or answer whatever proposal I'm doing. So, robbing per gun, no. But the initiative or whatever I was doing is almost per the same foundation. Okay, so let's touch on some of the things that you were doing um, because I know you were faking accidents. Yeah, I was faking as that's just that's just the least on the on the agenda. I think the first thing was I was impersonating AMA. I sometime back told you of this yeah. stop work thing. You were you were writing stop yeah, work. Yeah, I have a way of uh taking money from any new site where projects are being erected and new buildings and all these things i have a way of i have people around that go around and come with the information so at night we come to your outfit to come and write stop work consult area uh, ama sub metro office like this like this we can even leave contacts there and by all means there is there will be mutual understanding between we to be specifically me and your outfit and you are going to make a commitment because there are so many laws that whatever we react by way of building should accord to. So if anything at all, we are going to inspect your site for whatever project you are doing and I'll come out with something you have to make a commitment to. Okay, you were sentenced because of one of the crimes you committed with Senate, uh, with, with uh, GRA. Yeah, VAT. VAT. Yeah. 
you were issuing VAT invoice and uh, the, what really brought out this problem was after my for after education for some time I sat and thought that ah Ghana since independence always still we 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 think of the need of projecting high development wise social economic but yet still we know that the sources that is taxes collected are used to develop the country that's the street and other viable ventures but uh, i assessed the years and even when i take into consideration our reserves as and when uh, kuma won independence our account national account some in swiss bank and other places and then ghana shouldn't be called a poor country at this time of the day so which means either those resources they make us to know were not well accounted for or go into people's pockets at the point in time you understand what i'm saying so i decided to use myself as a sample space to investigate that fact and in fact but, but, but Gardner, I, I i i've been thinking about this who contracted you to be investigating no at a point in time i'm very investigative that's my style and one thing is i'm also daring i always want to do something people don't do and especially when it's related to money i'll put my life down for it you understand if i had the opportunity to link this tiger eye and other secret investigative units i would have made big deal for them you understand what i mean because there are so many things that we need to investigate under the table but at the end you were sentenced to prison yes i was charged for causing financial loss to the state because of the process or the criteria i used to do that assessment and i also stood the charge of impersonation yeah because i acted as a vat officer to some people who finally became victims but i committed them into paying amounts that were not supposed to be coming to me but to vat upon their negligence because if you know what to do you wouldn't come into such agreement with me okay. but although i had all the logistics to prove to them that i'm from vat because I had the VAT ID card. So, so where were you getting the VAT ID card and the receipt and everything? Where were you getting it from? All these things were per my own ideas from the VAT office. I live around Tesano, and there's a VAT outfit very close to my place, Ketnit House, industrial area. And I have mates who work within the VAT, you know, management system. So they were getting those things? They were not. They, I got them, drew them out of their... Ghana, I, 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 I don't get you. You, you wouldn't get me. <laughs> That's what I did. Something like, I visit there early in the morning since it's very close to my outfit. I go there with the intention to visit a friend. I go to his office. He's either not there or he's not come or he's gone out. There's always an opportunity to do another thing, irrespective of your intentions of going there. So I'm very curious. Everything I see on the table, anything I see somewhere, I'll examine to see if the material can be put to use. That's how I got the receipt book. That's why I got the audit letters. My friend, I shouldn't mention their name, was working with Fat and was in the office where audit letters were prepared. And I visit him very frequent. So Charlie, Perry, what are you doing here? What is this for? How are you see? So he gave me a foreknowledge of everything, but he didn't know, or little did he know, that I had intentions that was contrary to the rules or the laws of the land. You, you've been to prison on seven different occasions. Yeah, I've been to prison on seven. Okay, so what are some of the crimes that took you to prison? One of yeah. them is what we are talking about now. Yes, the VAT the thing VAT took you how many years in prison? Me two years. Okay, and other yeah, crimes? Yeah, other crimes. The AMA, the same impersonation charge ama i wrecked and I, I put up an ama sign post on any site that i see that it will be a good bid for sale uh, irrespective of the owner i mounted there 
and let you know that it's a government proposed site for either area community hospital or something for the community. And even if you own the land and you see that signpost, you will sit and think about yourself for some time. So on basis of encroachment um, and other factors, you see, I'll either relocate you and you know you have to pay for relocation and all these things. So I'll just end up chopping money from you. So that also took you to prison? I also took me to prison. How many years? I served two years. I've served two years as a sentence seven times. Two years, two years, two years, seven times. So I've spent almost 14 years of my life in prison. Consecutive. Can, can you share with me life in prison? Was it too hard for you? Uh, life in prison for me wasn't too hard because I'm very smart. And after the first time, I had enough experience to counter all such challenges. Yeah, it's simple. Only it's disturbing because maybe you would like to rest for more than six to eight hours, but you'll be forced to rest only four hours. You see, everything is timely and the kind of food you eat there and how you handle yourself. It is not so easy like you are in your home. But your first first experience was enough for you to my, go through. My, my, my first experience, although it wasn't so easy and simple, I had to adhere to certain things because I've had a full information of how the prison looks like. In fact, after the first one, there was no fear going there for even 10 times. There yeah. was no fear? Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's the same place, it's the same thing. And the place is no contributing anything of correction. No. Oh, anything there it's, a, to, it's a place to correct it people. It's not a correction. To reform you back. It in, is never. Our let prisons... Us, let, us, let, us, let us go this way. An addict like me will fall victim to this kind of circumstance. I will be sentenced to prison. I Two already, years. I already use drugs, cannabis, and others, mood altering substances freely. But I knew the law was there that we don't have the opportunity to do that. Now I go to prison and just to wake up in the morning, I hear somebody shouting, yes, you're rock and tie, meaning heroin and cocaine. Somebody is also shouting for cannabis. There are all moods of advertisement to purchase what they are telling In our prisons? In Ghana prisons, not anywhere. In Ghana prisons. In Saom is now the minimum prison. And Ankafu's prison is the maximum. the maximum prison. Both of them. There is no prison without drugs. They are complementary items. They go together. Prisoner and sedatives and tranquilizers. Because there are certain conditions you cannot just face, not until you are sedated. Your mood should be altered. Who, who, who brings those drugs into the prison? There are so many ways to which those things come in. Do you know? Uh, some. Let us... There are prisoners that go out with their officers, and officers take money because they know the need the demand for those things are high inside and outside so when they buy 50 cd cannabis and it crosses that security point and enters the yard it's going to be five times the price so they pay prisoners to bring them yeah they're making money is their but when you bring them they search them they said the security is to a limit no, there is nothing computerized there to scan through your stomach and things to see that. No, there is nothing like that. And all the logistics they are putting to work is vain, it's fake. Because the same people who are working on this security are the same people that are breaking the code. You see that thing? So you cannot just say security is ensured. Were you getting drugs when you were in prison? Actually, I didn't have the, I didn't want to be using drugs there because even using drugs outside the prison it's not an easy tax how much more a place like prison your economic resource is limited there everybody there is a sample thief you cannot go for somebody's item to go and sell for although we play fraudulent intelligence there it is of a kind so you wouldn't get the sources so open as you meet a layman outside. Everybody there is a sampled criminal. Were you humiliated when you were there? 
at a point in time, at a point in time, especially in prison, it is not how proficient you are, it is not how intelligent you are, it is not about your educational background, but it is power. You understand me? And you even be surprised that the homosexuals are highly in society in a prison. Yeah, they have that extreme. They power. practice homosexuality. Yeah, homosexualism is in prison. It's a no, it's a cliche. It's a normal thing. What if you are caught? It's a it's a chargeable offense when you are caught. But everybody there in one way or the other is being his brother's keeper. There are hotels all in the prison. There are casinos in the prison. Ah, hotel in prison. Yes. Could you just foresee this thing? Homosexuals having a meeting somewhere. In the prison? In the prison. It is not a new thing. It is, it is an old adage. Something that goes on. All these things are in prison. There are people when they see you come from prison, they don't even trust you again because they feel... It's a normal practice that everybody that goes to prison does it. No. But you can be on your bed and you see two men kissing. In prison? You dare not stop them. You dare not stop them. That is somebody's business. That is somebody, that is what somebody is using as his life, source of livelihood. Somebody is eating from it. Yes. The watchman is eating from the work. There are monitors that are making sure there is no contempt. What are some of the essential commodities in the prison? In the prison, positive or negative? Both. <laughs> ah, in the first place, I've made you know that the prison itself is no correctional facility in the first place. So there is nothing convenient about the prison. Because I thought... There are, there are, are, prison will reform you back into the society. A prison is supposed to be diversified in such a way that there should be guidance and counseling per, you know, all these things are there. They are hearsay, but they never work. You understand me? Uh, instead of, there should be a library. You see the library there. Yes, there's library written there. But if you dare enter, you'll be reading 1620 books. That are a cake with no information. It cannot be called a library. A library should keep up to time with changes. So that is not the library. There are all the all the agencies in prison are not working. I don't know if it is Africa, but I don't know. I've been to other prisons outside Ghana too, and it's almost the same, especially within Africa. It's the same. Nothing is <sighs> because a prisoner should be given. The open way communication to make a complaint as and when necessary, depending on what or how you feel, but you'll be denied of that opportunity. Even when you are saying the truth, that is when the negative and attractive influences will come to you. Did, did you see any popular face, some popular faces yeah, back in prison? I was in jail way back with uh, 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 these four ministers that caused financial loss to the state. Uh, who were dispersed and taken mm -hmm. to Kofoedua and things. I was in prison with Benjilo. I was in prison with uh, 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 Jima during his condemned sentence period. A whole lot of them, Azaglo, the policeman, and more strange people, Joma, 64, I'm specialist, and more people, more renowned personalities. They make you feel prison is a home away from home but really it is a lion's den because everybody there is a master of his field so those popular people were they treated differently you know, in prison there is no preferential difference for anybody at least the law is the law what time do you sleep we sleep we go in at five o'clock by 5 30 they check the number the rooms are locked Okay, so by five, by you should five. be in the room. You should be in your cell. If I say room, it, it looks more convenient. But if I say cell, you understand what I mean. The congestion, how packed you are. I understand People you'll be packed. Sleep. People stand and sleep. We rush in sleep. Yeah, you sleep for two hours, another man takes over. You stand, somebody sleep. If you go to block one, block one is called Sobibo. It's, a, it's the highest concentration block in in Sawan prison block one yeah a block that is supposed to be taking about 
300 inmates. It's now taking about 1,400 with an average of about five to 600 people per room. And at night, you ration sleep. sleep. Yeah. You sit and sleep. You stand and sleep. So I stand and I sleep and I, I check the time and then I tell you, wake up. No, there is somebody who always keeping time. That person will question you, Charlie, it's your time to rest. Go sit small. Go chalk small. They don't even say sit or sleep small. Go chalk small. Well, have you been in a room where someone died? I've met almost four or five deaths in prison. At night, the person at died? Night. Overnight. It happens. Nobody knows. But at the time, we wake up at 4.35. We do morning devotion in the morning. So when the bell goes for morning devotion, we all come up, we sit, we chalk. Outside? Inside the cell. The oh, Muslims okay. are going to pray first. 4.30, they pray for almost one hour. Five. Hold on. Okay, so Muslims will pray yeah. whilst we watch them. Yeah, whilst we watch them. The but you, that, which where, where do you belong? Me, I'm an agnostic. <laughs> I'm skeptic, especially when I go to prison. First, I hold the perception that, ah, God has never been good to me. Mm. God is there. We still come here. We come and preach. And God watch me come to prison. Mm. Uh, why didn't God kill my infirmity? Addiction is my problem. It's not helping me do that instead. So, after they are done with their prayers, yeah, they, they, they will also go and chalk. You chalk. For you, the Christian. Yeah, for the Christians to. Is it compulsory? It is compulsory. That is the only aspect in prison that I find so important, at least prayer time. That is an evidence, evidence to the fact that there is a common belief that God is real. How, how long does a prayer take? Do you take? Almost 30 minutes, 40 minutes. When you are done, you wait for the doors to be open. Yeah. When we are done, just on time. The bell will go for a number check. And you'll be surprised somebody will chalk and will never be able to wake up. It's gone. Somebody will lie and in the morning when we are waking up 4.30, it's gone. They bang the gate and shock and sound takes you up. There are so many people that die intermittently. Anyway. So when, when you die, you, they lie with you, the living. There is no, there is no much in the prisons except that there is somewhere we can keep you for some time just awaiting burial normally there is this process when you give up in prison there, there are doctors there who have to give evidence of you being dead to confirm dead, that to yeah. confirm the confirmation comes legally they mm -hmm. sign there. so after that they try to consult your nest of kin, your parents, and that kind of thing. Would after, they give the body to them? It's a process. Let me come. After 14 days, if they really need the body, because the prisons don't need your people, they have you. You understand me? So if your people need the body, within 14 days, there should be contact. So they come to the prison. They come to the prison. They negotiate. Because you've not finished serving your sentence. Yeah. There is an amount, they, they calculate. There is an amount you have to pay if the sentence is... Even if you, die to, if, you, if you die today and you are going home tomorrow, there is something you have to Oh, okay. So, if you are not done serving your sentence no. and you die and your family come... They have to bail you out. Yeah. So, that is the reason why most of them, they don't even come. What will you come for such a bedding? You wouldn't. So, what happens to the body? The body... There is mass burial. Prisons always at the end of every week. But why do you keep the bodies inside yeah, the prison? That is what I'm telling you that we have a place which is not, it's no cold room. Yeah, it's just a plain room like this. We have stretchers that they lay you on. And you know, we have communist ways of preserving the body. They smear cement on you. They have some herbs they use to balm you some kind of... Just for some few days. You know, there is every kind of personality in the prison. People that work at the mortuary, people we have different ways of maintaining the body. Do, do, do you cry sometimes? The people around there if is no funeral in prison, everybody is always an as and when necessary 
sharing pain and tears in his As own for the way. tears, is every day. It is even joy when they hear that you passed away. So that you can get space to sleep. Not apart from getting the space to sleep, it is an opportunity for another man who is going to help bury you, get something to drink. Because you've stayed in that confinement for too long. This time you are taking the body out. Definitely you utter your state of oblivion. You drink something. You see? So death in the prison is Okay, nothing, let's nothing let's assume about. you are in the prison. It's late in the night. Yeah. Someone is in pain. Someone is seriously sick. How do you alert the prison officers? Uh, there, there is a process as to that. Maybe let's take it like we are in cell one and somebody is in deep pain. Whoever sees or recognizes that condition should report to the cell leader. The cell leader has the opportunity to make a complaint, external complaint. There is also a security man on duty at night or overnight. You complain to the security man. He, he, is he always uh, He's roaming? always within the block. Every block has 12 cells. Okay. So we are in the cell at night. So cell one, you shout, cell one will be woe, cell one will be woe. And then I say, complain, complain, and then I say, the officer will come. What is happening if you tell? The officer, no matter how humanitarian you are, you don't have the chance to open the cell. That officer, the night officer, will go and call the block. Does he, does he have even have the keys? No. He doesn't have the keys. That is the most reason why people die overnight. Because you know prisoners can plan and give a complaint that somebody is dying and... as a means of escape. So you open the door, not pray, we are all out. You catch some, the rest go. You see? So before the cell is opened, between after 5.30 to the morning, 6 o'clock, there are others guarding the door. Okay. The, the, the cell leader shouts... The, the shouts, security personnel the security around personnel will ask around. about what is the yeah, problem. After inquiries, he's going to send the information to a block master. Every block has its master. There are offices in there. Okay, so if you go like, oh, there is one, someone here with a severe headache. Nah, headache. Are you a doctor? How do you know the person? The person is headache. complaining of headache. He is complaining of headache. So don't confirm headache for the person. In the same way, when somebody tells you, I have a stomach ache and you have trisilicate and you help the person and the next minute he's dead. You have killed him. They don't do that in prison. So talk for yourself. So they will ask the one in pain, uh, what is happening what is to happening you? What is happening to you? Okay. Then he will say whatever he wants to say to the people. Mm -hmm. The person will carry that information to the block master. Will he be awake by that time? The block master is a night block master. He's not supposed to be sleeping. You are ensuring security and you are asleep. It's like the watchman telling the master that he had a dream. How can he, how can he have a dream? So he goes to tell the blog master. Yes. What does he do? Uh, the blog master only has the opportunity to report to the officer in charge. Again. The process is about a seven-step pro process, which is all going to take almost three, four hours. So if death is really knocking well, on How far is that place? The whole prison yard is a 10 mile square plot. So can you just imagine from block one to block two is a distance. So block master will have to go and report to the officer in charge. Mm -hmm. That is the yard master. And the yard master communicates to the general officer in charge, OIC, before the OIC gives the permission. To take the keys, it will still follow that same process before the door is open. So before the door opens, they will be around. A lot of the officers will be around. Yes, almost 10 people will be Amped. at one gate. Armed. Yes. It's a wrong time to open the cell. <laughs> yeah. And we can conspire to escape. So they are fully armed and... The cell is opened. We carry... You, nobody is allowed to come out. You, the person that is ill... Even if you cannot walk, that is the time you walk because you are seeking medication. So you wake up and walk. And, and you come out. And you go out. Nobody goes out with you. And when, The when, very time you cross the gate is an attempt to escape. It's a chargeable offense. 
So they take you out. You go out. Okay, you go out. out. Yeah. They get hold of you. Yeah. Where, where do you, they take you to where? There is an infirmary in the yard. So there, there, there is a prison officer who is a medical officer who will check you first. And he is going to give the direction. Either you should be taken to hospital or they should keep you. or Till morning. Till morning. Anything can happen. You can be taken to hospital at dawn. That's when... They temper mercy with justice. When you are fortunate, you be taken to hospital. But when death is diligently knocking at your door and they deny you certain opportunities, you die in the state. Okay. At night, you have a running stomach. What do you do? There is a place of convenience inside. So, irrespective of the number of times you are running, you can perch and run there. It is just there. We live within within the confines of our habitation. Where we live, the cell, there is a place of convenience. There is a bathroom inside. But there are laws surrounding the use of the place. Too. What are some of the laws? Uh, you don't just go there barefooted. You don't enter the bathroom barefooted. You don't come out of the place naked too. Or homosexualism is the order of the day there and you expose yourself like that. No. You don't go there when you see the curtain is closed. You don't go there until the curtain is open. So, if you are using the place, you should make sure the curtain is closed. Yeah, and if you are the first person to use the place, you wash the place the next morning. Is it water closet? It is water closet, but on a kick system. Water doesn't flow in prison so free as the home. So, how do you, how do you go about it? Yeah. If you don't have water, irrespective of your running stomach, nobody will consider you. Except Even at night? Irrespective of time, except you want to use your bag or your cup or something. And yes, yes, that is the law. It is never done. You need to have water, so you find water. Maybe through humanitarian reasons, somebody can decide to help you with a bucket of water. Fine. You want to ease, leave that shit there. Then we 60 sleep in the room till the next day. It's not the best. Has there been an instance that someone called for help by the time officers came in, the person was dead? Yeah, so many times. As I told you, that almost every week somebody loses his life because of the process, the legalities set for opening the cell, coming out, and all these things. There are ways that don't really help life in prison. You can even go to the, you can even go to the infirmary, the medical facility. The doctor is not there, so irrespective of your pain or whatever, you'll be living at the mercy of chance. That's yours. That's why prison is no better place to go. Prison is no better place to go. That is a quick uh, gardener of um, Rema. Karen, what, what are you doing here at Rema? Uh, at the moment, I'm a recovery ambassador because I'm more used to the society because of my addiction, my crime records, and other things that I've done socially and publicly. So I feel for God helping me for this positive change, then I should be the best agent or instrument to reach out to the same scope of people that will be a living testimony as to whatever testamentary evidence we give. If there is a possibility for somebody like me to change, then everybody can change. You understand me? So that is what I want to do with the rest of my life, at least spread the gospel of recovery and see people change from their old. And how has it been like? Very effective. Rima has given me the opportunity. We are on media, we are on TV telling stories of changes, testimonies, and all these things are geared towards the same aim. Because God is giving us this opportunity, I believe, for me. Had it not been this, I wouldn't believe him by now. God wants to use me to satisfy this cause. Because it is something I do free, no stress, no pain, no workload encountered, nothing like that, out of my own free will. So I feel it should be my aim and objective. Okay. There is no yeah. other thing.
Okay, thank you, Kweku Gardner. So that was um, Kweku Gardner. Uh, call him Evo. Um, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. And many thanks to Ash Token Cryptocurrency. If you want to really invest into cryptocurrency, then it should be Ash Token. Their numbers is on the screen. Just call them, make an inquiry, and invest and buy Ash Token now for as low as 50 cities. God bless you. Bye-bye. Have you heard about the crypto for the planet? Now, here's why you should get the ASH token. The ASH token is a platform for funding business initiatives that aims to eliminate pollution from the global environment. ASH token is navigated by experts whose profile and faces are known and available to you. The ASH token is not just a coin. You will be supporting eco-friendly companies to make the world green. The ASH token is backed by real companies outside the crypto ecosystem. Ash Token is registered in the United States of America, both at the federal level and also in the state of Wyoming. You can walk into any Ash Token office in the US and right here in Ghana. Sign up now, get that Ash. Ash Token is supported by GCS Fibers and GCS Ghana Limited. For inquiries, you can visit Accra Head Office, Cantonment, adjacent to the Italian Embassy, Whole Office inside Bayport Building, Third Floor, opposite the whole High Court. You can call us on 0303 942 268.